Hey YouTube, I'm Nick from Nick282K and this is a follow-up to my scrap box induction motor video. This type of motor is a brushed permanent magnet DC motor. There's a large magnet underneath the rotor that I've taken from a microwave oven, a coil of wire on the rotor, and two metal strips that act as a commutator uh, on the end of the rotor. In normal operation, uh, two wires or copper br or uh, carbon brushes rather come in from the sides and uh, allow electricity to flow in through one brush, through the coil, and back out through the other brush. This causes a magnetic field to develop inside this coil and it wants to line up with the magnet underneath. Just as the coil starts to line up with the magnet underneath, the wires will slip off of one brush and onto the next one, reversing the flow of electricity in the coil. That reverses the magnetic field in the coil and makes it want to turn around again. Every half, every half rotation, those uh, two brushes switch to the next metal strip and reverse the polarity of the magnetic field, keeping the motor turning. When I first showed this motor running, it was being powered by DC power supply. Uh, but DC power supplies are usually big. They require uh, solid state components or uh, just a battery, which eventually runs out. If you want to power this from the wall using something simple like a transformer, uh, there's going to be some modifications. Here I'm applying an AC to the motor with no modifications. It turns a little bit, but not in a useful way. It wants to, uh, more than anything, just sit in one place and vibrate. That's because the magnetic field in the coil keeps changing directions, and the coil gets pulled one way, and then uh, one sixtieth of a second later, it gets pull pulled the other way, and uh, it doesn't want to spin up like a motor should. To make this motor work using AC, there's a very simple modification that turns it into a universal motor. I've added a, a large coil and an iron core uh, and this is wired in series with the rotor. What happens is as the current flows through this coil and flows through the rotor, uh, the magnetic fields uh, start to interact with each other just like in the DC version. But every time the current changes direction because it's being powered by AC. It changes direction in both the series coil and in the rotor. It's like taking that permanent magnet and flipping it back and forth in perfect synchronous with the line frequency. This means that even though it's being powered by AC and the magnetic field changes direction very quickly in the rotor coil, it changes just as quickly and in synchronous in the field coil, making the motor turn like normal. First I'm going to run the motor on DC to show that uh, this series coil works the same as the magnet in the first version. Now I'm going to run the same motor on AC to show that it's uh, a universal type motor. You can see there's a lot more arcing in the universal motor than there is in the permanent magnet motor. This is because of the high inductance of the series coil. This arcing consumes the brushes very quickly. In a real motor they would use carbon brushes because they tend to last a little longer. Just to sum things up, I'm going to go over a few of the uses, advantages and disadvantages to all three of these motors. The permanent magnet motor um, has the advantage of being able to be very small. Uh, in this case it's small enough to fit into a slot car, a toy that not many people really remember anymore. The slot cars are very torquey uh, and they're very high speed but the brushes in them, like the brushes on these two motors, they don't last forever and in slot cars they actually wear out very quick. The universal motor 
uh, is used in almost every handheld power tool around. Corded and cordless drills, grinders, sanders, sawzalls, all use these brushed universal motors for that same high speed and high torque characteristic, but they do have a lifetime. The induction motor, uh, in my case, has almost no torque because it wasn't really designed, it was just lashed together. But in general, they're not quite as torquey as their brushed counterparts. But they do have the advantage of lasting almost forever. The only moving parts in them are the bearings, and the bearings almost never run out. Uh, try and think of how many of these box fans you've seen, and uh, how many you've seen that don't work anymore. Not many. Those motors are very resilient and they can be used in a lot more environments because they don't spark like the brushed motors. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. Uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this, check out my feed. Thanks for watching.